So for those of uh, you who are just joining us again, um, this is the Run for Climate um, Twitter space that we are organizing in the run up to the run, which we will host on the 19th of June at Makere University. And today we are joined uh, with uh, two speakers, uh, Benjamin uh, Rikwenje, the founder of um, Boundless, and also Jeanette Nakazi, who is a seasoned runner and also a basketball uh, player. Uh, before we broke off, we had briefly heard from uh, uh, Benjamin. And uh, Benjamin, I will bring you back uh, just to reiterate some of the elements you've mentioned already, uh, just uh, uh, for people who are just joining us and also given that uh, the link broke earlier on. Uh, but we mentioned that this is organized by Tree Adoption Uganda, which is a youth-centric non-governmental organization that is powered by the vision of creating communities where people in nature flourish. And this year we are organizing the Run for Climate, which will take place on the 19th of June at Makere University. And the aim for that really is to restore 200 acres of land by growing 100,000 trees. So we welcome you uh, onto this uh, Twitter space and hopefully we will see you at the Run for Climate. Now we are able to hear uh, Jeanette. So I will ask uh, Jeanette to go ahead and introduce herself. Uh, who are you? Uh, what do you do? Who do you work for? And also your personal views on why running and exercise is important. Jeanette, why do you run? Um, thank you very much, Charles. I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is Janet Nakazi. I work with Mad Makan uh, or Mad Advertising. I'm a, I'm a casual runner. Okay, I run as a hobby. <laughs> and I played uh, basketball the longest. I still play um, in. I still play in the. Um, in the lower division now because of age i don't i don't want to play at a high level anymore i played at high level for almost 15 years um in the top flight so yeah uh, that's pretty much janet and i think um for me running is therapy uh i get to do my home strategies on the road i get to do yes i have the benefits of exercising and then it also helps to clear up my head pretty much yeah, that's mainly part of I use running as therapy for me. Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, just before, again, uh, we broke up, we were just looking at uh, the element of the uh, monitoring. Uh, there has been a lot of integration of technology in the whole running and exercising uh, movement, if I was to call it. Uh, that way and it's what benjamin was also sharing about but we wanted to get your views on uh, about monitoring uh, people monitoring how many calories am i uh, burning uh, what distance do i run every day uh, how is my heart functioning during the run what do you what do you recommend uh, for people especially beginners to to monitor and and why um mainly for people who are beginning um, if you are beginning, let's say uh, you start never, you haven't been running. The first thing I think you need to do a medical exam. You need to, regardless of the weight that you have, you need to know that your body is in condition. So most times I suggest I would prefer that someone starts out by walking, um, and then the body gets used to to the working out, to the burning, and it starts opening up, and then you progress. So even the mileage, you don't start with running 10 kilometers. You start with two and then three. And then um, the most, the biggest benefit is usually to set uh, short targets. Like uh, you get small wins. For example, you can say, I want uh, to have three months to be able to run 5K nonstop uh, comfortably. Not, I'm not asking you to do Jacob Kipley more speeds. No, as in comfortably, you're able to have a conversation with someone as you 
then you keep progressing and, and growing so that you, well, once you have short-term targets, it's easier to accomplish and celebrate the small wins than when you when you, you you when you want to start from zero and you hit uh 10 it uh, it will be very difficult for your body to cope and then also to to repair your body you just shock your body in the system so it has to be a gradual process awesome and uh, benjamin just to bring you back on this issue uh, you, you you were mentioning a few other variables that can be uh, monitored yeah, um, <clears throat> Charles, like I had said, uh, Janet is, a, you know, my senior at this. So I think for me, the, the thing with the variables that we measure, I'm pretty much, I said I'm pretty much um, a pedestrian runner uh, in that regard and will be like, maybe 98 percent of the people who take part, uh, part in the run for climate um, change uh, marathon if if you can even call it that uh so the only things i measure are distance and speed so i can tell you um what distance i want to cover when i go out um I, and it started with just running around our compound at home couple of years ago and then upping that to you know five kilometers 10 kilometers 15 20 i think the longest i have gone is 27 um but but that's all i measure how long am i running how fast am i running um how, am i faster today than i was you know last week and because of that i can tell you for sure that I am much slower now, and I can't quite explain why. I'm much slower now than I was, for example, last year. But also that I am able to do longer distances now than I did last year. So that's really what I measure. I don't pay attention to calories and heart rate and all of that stuff, probably because like Janet, the reason why I run is more for its therapeutic value than it is for, you know, I don't know, losing weight or, you know, um, any of the other stuff that many other people might be running for. So, yeah. So just to ask both of you, really, does it get any easier? Does, does running get easier? Uh, I guess what discourages uh, most uh, new runners is uh, after the, that very first run, uh, you're hyperventilating. Uh, my personal experience was uh, feeling like my chest was on fire. Uh, the, 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 the day after, you have muscle cramps, pains all over the body. Does it get any easier? Does it get uh, any better, uh, Jeanette? Um, yes, it does. Um, in one of my running clubs, we have a saying, Sidu Talo, stay in your lane. In other words, we are telling you, run your speed. Don't um, follow the crowds. I can give you an example. My first half marathon, which was 21K, and I went to Nairobi very excited, thinking, ah, I've been playing basketball, so I'm fit and everything. And then the guys kept telling me the rules in races like this is don't chase a woman don't chase an old man why you don't know how they have been training so when you reach at about 10 in the wrong bus so we call them buses where you agree to like benjamin said as your timing what speed can i get to but all this comes it gets easier with consistency you have to be consistent for example, if you're starting out, you can say, okay, I'll be walking three times a week for the first month. Then I'll be running once and two times, and I walk two times, and then you progress. And then even the runs vary. The speed at which I do short distances, let's say a 5K, is going to be different from the speed I'm going to use to do a 20K. Why? 
the body's um, ability to sustain you on the road. So you have to build that resilience step by step. The easiest example I can give you is when, for example, as women, as, as a sports person, you have you're recovering from maternity. You have just given birth. And so you, you're back on the road, let's say, two months. Technically, in your head, you have been in certain places on the race, but your body is not there. So you have to have the discipline to start walking first. You walk 15 minutes, then you progress to 30, then the following week you do 45 then you start doing a, a run of 15 minutes, a run of 20 minutes, you know, so you build the progression. So it is, it is the resilience that makes it easier. Then the other thing to avoid the, the X is hydration and, and stretching. You have to hydrate. Most people think when they see long distance runners with the small bottles, you take a sip or two, it, your body, because once you're working out, your body is losing salt and water, so you have to replace. So for you, um, most times, the most important thing is once you hydrate or you finish your small run, start it easy. Do it easy. Do not. You can compete after you have been running easy for a while. It will get easier and much better. And then you can even gauge and see how far have I come. So it helps you, and then the stretching, the X be there. But as you get used to the working out, then it becomes part of the whole thing whereby, you know, yes, I finished the race, I will act tomorrow, but then day two, I will be good to go for another walk maybe. So, yeah, it gets easier with time. Yeah, very interesting that uh, you bring up uh, the stay in your lane and run your own race. Yesterday, I joined the Harshers uh, uh, for Kampala, and I was running around with them. I would see all these little courts they have. It's just a hill, you know, get over it. Uh, but really important for you to uh, know what you can manage and master and then just uh, take it one step at a time. Benjamin, any other thoughts on that? Does it get easier? How has it been for you in your experience? Yeah, it certainly gets easier. And I, I, running is, is a, you know, it's addictive. Eh? You, you start to crave it. And the reason why you crave it is that it's easier. That's one. Two, that you get to a point where you your 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 body is now used to five kilometers so once you go out you don't feel like you've done enough um or you've challenged yourself enough after five kilometers so you you now want to move to eight or ten it's it's so 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 and that's because it's it, it gets easier on your body um because you know, even mentally, you are a lot more prepared than you would have been at the start. So I'm not surprised. So sometimes I will be suffering uh, out there and you see someone come and, you know, breeze past you. And they, you're like, man, I am running at like 5, uh, you know, 5.30. How fast is this guy going? But like Janet said, first of all, stay in your lane. But also... Um, because of how much practice uh, people are doing, it's easier for them to do these sorts of stuff than it would have been for anyone else. And I probably uh, shouldn't be saying this uh, because Janet is here and she's going to give me grief for it. But I had a, a pro I, ha I have I have an active problem with my knee, uh, and I find that. The longer I run, the less painful it gets, right? So when I start out the first two, one, two, three kilometers, I can still I can feel the pain or the discomfort if you like. But you know, five kilometers, 10, 15 in, and I am good. The next time I will feel that pain is when I start running again. Uh, so, and, and, you know, someone has um, said before that when the body hurts, go back and run because that, that will stop it. So it certainly gets easier. Awesome. And um, just uh, going further into tips, especially for the new runners, um, what, what would be your top do's and, and don'ts 
Uh, we've had people being knocked down on an evening uh, run. Uh, they're running on the side of the road and they get knocked down. Is there a particular side of the road one should run at? Uh, should we run at coming cars or, or, or something like this? Uh, are there particular shoes? Uh, uh, Benjamin, you're talking about your knee. Is it an element of the shoes? Is it the surface you're running on? Uh, do people have to run every day? Uh, do they have to do so many kilometers? W what kind of uh, tips or do's and don'ts uh, would you give uh, to new runners? Um, okay, uh, one, if you're running on the road, we always um, it's always prudent to wear one, a brighter color a very bright color we usually call them the neon colors uh, since you ran yesterday with the hashes you really see their colors usually it's the neon orange and the neon pink and the neon green. um it's really to help um to help whoever is using the road to identify you early two you have to run against oncoming traffic when you are seeing the cars that are coming towards you you try to stay on that side of the road for people who are beginning um we are blessed with neighborhoods that have tens and thousands of shortcuts small parts that are that are busy that are not busy with with, with too much traffic um and i know we don't like the mud but actually the, the trails we call Shields are much gentle on the knees than the tarmac and the, uh, and the cement. So it is uh, you're, you're safer to run on, on, on the maram sides of the section. So usually if you're starting out, it's better for you to alternate your runs. Especially if you're going to do long runs. Uh, if, for example, you stay near a main road, you can do a section starting on the main road and then you find a small trail off the main road with less traffic so you can be more comfortable and then most of the time we want to run music which is very good however the music has to be at a volume where you are aware of your surroundings at all times you can hear an oncoming car you can hear if someone talks to you because yes the music can help you to you know to to take your mind off the the, the pounding and you don't want to feel the fatigue but you have to have a situation analysis of sorts. Shoes. Um, there are shoes that we call beautiful shoes. There are shoes that are on the market that really afford. You know, looking good and fashion. Yes, they are they are sports shoes, they may be canvas shoes, or but they are not actual running shoes. So you need to actually get good running shoes with good cushion. This helps to protect your, your legs uh, because of the amount of pressure that comes from the ground. So most times people who are starting suffer with the runner's knee. Why? Because of their shoes. And, um, and then you have to learn to keep track of the amount of kilometers you have done on your shoes. Most of the shoes that we buy, let's say, secondhand, it would not be wise if your shoes have more than 500 kilometers on them. If they make 500 kilometers, that cushioning can't do anything for you anymore. Get rid of them. If, uh, if for example, you bought a new shoe, a new pair, let's say from Nike or Adidas or New Balance uh, for running shoes, then they can give you 800 to 1,000 kilometers. But even you, once you get used to the shoe, once it gets old, you still feel, you feel cushioning getting less and less. So once you start feeling the ground through your shoes, it is old, you get rid of it to protect yourself from, from injury. And then the sole has to be soft. For running shoes, they have to be soft and it has to have the right grip because um, to, to help you in case it rains so that you, uh, it's, yeah, and it's slippery, it has grip for, for you to manage through um, the mud and everything. So I think for everyone who is starting, you, you don't have to start one minute per kilometer. It's okay to do 10 minutes per kilometer and then you build. With time, as you progress, you'll find that it gets better with time. Once you do an easy run and then let's say, for example, there's a Kabaka's run coming up and you have been training for three months and then you say, ah, no, come Kabaka's run, I want to do my 10K comfortably whereby how comfortable you can get is you reach at the finish line of that 10K and you're not dropping dead. You are actually comfortable to have a conversation and enjoy the run as well. So you take it easy, 
take your time and then you build the resilience and then it gets you will get better over time and then hydration 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 for every 40 minutes you are out on the road you need to have at least two sips of hydration water or diluted juice yeah that's Thank my take for now Thank you very much, uh, Jeanette. Very, very uh, insightful uh, tips. Uh, Benjamin, you can certainly add uh, uh, some tips, but I just wanted to go into the little conversation around running and uh, resilience. Uh, like you mentioned already, you do this for your mental health. And like we've seen in the literature, uh, as a species, we are known to be hunter-gatherers. So our bodies work better when they are used, moved around, etc. Uh, it challenges uh, both your body and uh, mind. Uh, lots of people, but also scientists, are starting to show more and more evidence that it builds our resilience, it makes us stronger, allows us to reflect, redefine, assess ourselves. Is, is this whole running uh, doing anything for you in terms of, say, performance at, at, at your workplace, adapting uh, to various uh, uh, situations or social problems, or even uh, challenges that you come across in day-to-day -day, uh, life. Would you uh, accredit that to running in any way? Um, thank you, Charles. Uh, just just on the, the last question, I felt that I, Jeanette uh, exhausted uh the, you know the tips maybe the one thing she might have forgotten is a tip especially for women right um avoid do not run in the dark right um because it's not especially for women it's not safe uh, in this city one do not run in the you know when it's dark uh do avoid deserted um routes uh, you know, when you go out to run um, and, and you know, the, the, the thing about music and blocking out your ears is especially important um, in that aspect that if you go out to run, it's, it's, it's you please, please um, make sure you can hear everything that's around you. Um, they, I know that there are apps um, which also basically when you start running you can alert someone else um the app can alert someone else about the route you're using or wherever it is that you and stuff like that so um especially for women in this city or in this country or you know wherever um it's not always safe as it's not always as safe as it is for for men um then back to resilience uh so it's very interesting um, because I think that very few things are build emotional and mental resilience in the way that sports or exercise does. The fact that you're able to build uh, phys like, that physical resilience um, translates into other things. So I am very very keen on why sportsmen succeed right so i i watch documentaries and read um, a lot of of of, of um, biographies and, and and features on sportsmen to try and understand what makes them succeed but two how they are able to succeed in other parts of their lives during um the the, the course of their you know sports um career but even after you know they go on to become uh good businessmen they make uh, even when they make so much money it's the, you're very they very rarely lose it compared to um the ones who who lose uh, who be who eventually become poor are probably much fewer than the ones who eventually uh you know make something of the wealth that they would have made from their sports careers and I've also um, asked this very uh, same question to Joshua Cheptege, who is, you know, Uganda's, probably Uganda's greatest um, Olymp Olympian. 
uh, and, and, and sportsman. And the question was whether he felt that he, success on the track was essential for how much he was able to dream and do and envision um, off the track. And he said yes, because all of the things that you need to succeed on the track are pretty much similar to what you need to succeed elsewhere in your life. So from discipline, right? Um, knowing that my body is only capable of doing five kilometers in, you know, one hour or 40 minutes or whatever, and that's what I will do. Knowing that I need to rest after I have done a run if I want to be able to do another um, or whatever, if I want to be able to take care of my knees and ankles and doing that, knowing that I need to get, um, I need to put in these miles or kilometers or whatever, knowing that, knowing that uh, if I want to prepare for a marathon, uh, this is how many kilometers I need to have put in for me to feel like my body is able to do that. All of those things take a lot of discipline. They take a lot of, 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 um, of understanding of self and, and, and awareness of self, which is essential for building um, for, in terms of being, you being able to transfer that to the rest of your life. But also, they build your resilience uh, in ways that you might not always be able to tell. So, for example, because you're able to exert yourself um, physically, you also find that you will probably not make excuses for when you need to work longer hours, um, to put in longer hours at work or in school or, you know, wherever that might be demanded. Because your body is already prepared, right, for, you know, suffering, if you like. But also, your emotionally, rather mentally, you're also prepared because physical exertion prepares your mind as well. So you know what to expect even when you go out uh, to demand of, of, of more, of, to demand more from yourself at work and, and, and in these other spaces. So I'd say yes, um, if you're looking to build emotional and mental resilience, um, physical exercise is actually a pretty simple and great way to start. Awesome. Uh, looks like a uh, Jeanette is uh, back to being a listener. Uh, Jeanette, if you can uh, uh, request to speak, uh, but also if you can just accept the speaker invitation so that we can uh, be able to hear you. But really uh, good to hear you um, lay it out that way, uh, Benjamin. And just to move the conversation a little bit into um, what the environment uh, has got to do with the running. Of course, the majority of the people who are running, uh, running here in the city. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I joined the Hashas yesterday and we were running around uh, areas of Kamocha, Kololo, etc. Uh, but we had a, a Twitter space recently here around air pollution and uh, the experts uh, from Airco told us these are also some of the most uh, polluted uh, areas. Uh, Part of this uh, pollution is coming from uh, uh, exhaust fumes, from uh, vehicles burning uh, biomass uh, fuel, uh, the dust itself uh, that uh, uh, is within the city. As a runner, as a person who is very uh, interested in exercise, are you worried about these changes, uh, about uh, the pollution? Uh, as you're running, you're hyperventilating, uh, obviously, like we had earlier on, so you're taking in more and more of these uh, pollutants. What are your fears? Uh, what are your thoughts around this? I'll go with uh, Janet first. Um, for example, just the state of the air um, in Kampala alone, I can't when, for example, you're doing a run longer than 21 kilometers, you feel it, the exhaustion is different. 
and your speed is different and even the way you burn out is different from when you do from when you do the same run out of town like the air is different so uh, for example when you run for example within the city center on Saturday run with pretty much do central business district so you end up getting thirst thirst faster you get a dry throat generally because the car fumes the air is hotter everything is con like the air is not really fresh so you have it's until you reach maybe a place like let's say kololo that has many trees that you can get you know like that cold breeze over you um the, the only the best example i can give someone is if you live in kampala and for example you go you drive out of town you know or you run along the expressway when you run uh for example between munyonyo and kajansi once uh when you're when you're in munyonyo the 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 feel of the air is different from when you are approaching around busavala which is so much of a swamp and then as you come up um towards kajansi it gets hotter so most times as as a person who is running you suffer more because now you're getting dehydrated faster the air is is more humid if it has rain, it feels very very heavy for you to breathe in so it's a, it's really the environment is very very uh, is a very big concern we we have lost most of the green spaces in this town or oh, okay in the city because for example if you look at other countries um i'm going to give an example of kigali if you look at kigali kigali i think is one of the safest cities to run in uh one the roads are paved then there's lighting you can even run at midnight but then the air still yes they are at high but because they have so many trees even if you are running at midday, you don't feel the same burden like how you run at midday in Kampala. It's different. Um, so we really need to have those green spaces. And, and then for, for, uh, for people who are running, especially if you're going to do long runs, like runs that are more than um, 15K, try to get off the main roads, try to stay, um, try to do rural try to go to to the, the the maram parts of you know parts of the city that the non congested places one actually one of my favorite running places right now is motondwe yes the hills are there but the calm and the quiet and you know the quiet most of the homes have their trees and it it feels even if you are tired it it feels different from when you are running uh let's say at a uh, you're running up Sheraton. So it's, we really need to have those spaces. We really need to create those spaces again. In the city. Because the city is expanding. Because last time we were in, we, were, we ran through Kira and, and, um, and Sisa. And you would feel that it is, by the time you reach Chambogo, you feel like you have come from peace to heat. Just just around Namugongo alone. Why? Because of the block hits, the blocks, the tarmac, the heat is bouncing off the, the tarmac. So we really need to try to keep those places. Yes, the city is expanding the network, but we need to keep those places green and as fresh as possible. For us to be able to decongest whereby when you drive out of the business district and you've been in traffic jam for three hours once you get home at least you have that fresh air you know to calm down and decongest uh, what you have taken in the whole day brilliant uh, brilliant janet uh, uh let's go to mutundwe and run uh definitely a very very nice neighborhood and i'm sure uh, there are a number of uh, neighborhoods uh, you mentioned also kind of the rural uh, places, you know, less industrialized, more green spaces. And uh, we hosted um, uh, the urban forester for KCCA here on one of the spaces, and he was telling us about some of the plans that KCCA has to kind of uh, create more of these uh, greener spaces. So really a uh, very good uh, to listen to you share those insights around how the environment, the climate itself, is intertwined uh, with the whole theme of uh, running. Uh, Benjamin, any uh, further remarks on that? Um, 
climate environment running? First, first of all, I think Kampala is the worst city to run in. Okay, I mean, there are obviously like worse cities like uh, Bombay and what, but the, the thing with Kampala is, first of all, it's a very small city. And you have industries in literally every place. In fact, you even have industries located in residential areas. So the pollu there's no way to escape pollution in this city. That's one. So in industrial um, pollution. Two, you have border borders and uh, cars um, driving on the wrong side of the road and against traffic. Um, when you're running, you are the one that's very likely uh, either going to have to interface with them, so that, you know, in terms of just the danger of running in the city, but also you're taking in all of this smoke because there's no regulation around the public transport system. So, do, those two things alone um, just make running in this city uh, very difficult. Um, the, the third thing is, you, if you think about you know a thirty kilometer radius out of this city, maybe even fifty, where you could find like proper trails, proper forested trails, the kinds that uh, Janet is talking about. You, I mean, where are you going to find them? There's, I think, I can think of like uh, on Masaka Road, there's Mpanga, the forest. Uh, then on uh, Ginger Road, there's um, like, I don't know, Marida or something. There are some roads where you will drive for, you know, kilometers and kilometers. And they, there's no forested place where you can create these sorts of, of um, great running uh, that supports both the person that's running, but also um, complements the environment, right? And that's the danger for all of us. That even where you see the city expanding, right? So the city, Janet just told you about, you know, the city expanding to places like Kira, Burindo, Buate, and places like that. Right now, those places are, you know, they, they, they are you know, suburbs and the villages and what. In five, ten years, the chaos that you see in the Nigeria and the, some of these places that are not properly planned for, uh, um, you know, where, you know, houses are facing wherever they like, trees have been cut down, um, people are putting, you know, industries and the small little factories next to um, to, to residential areas, that chaos, because there's no proper uh, urban planning, that chaos is still going to expand in the same way that the city is expanding. So, if you can't find a place to run today uh, because the, of the way the city is uh, and because of the pollution, or if you're running in spite of all of that, there's very little going to change. Um, so people who are buying um, properties in Kira, uh, Nakuero, and all of those places, um, right now it looks like a, a great place. But chaos will eventually um, find them. Then you know because you can see it. You have all sorts of people. Uh, you have all people building all of these great houses, and nobody's building. You know these communal parks for children to play, right? Um, or children to run around. Uh, and, and there's no thinking around how do we create um, great spaces that complement humanity and nature. And because we are not thinking like that, my worry is, is uh, the problem will probably get worse before it gets better. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin, for that. Um, interesting.
in point. Uh, of course, some of our, our listeners are parents. Uh, Jeanette, when, when should they begin running uh, or running seriously or really getting into this whole uh, exercise repertoire? And is there any benefit for, for the children? Um, I think one of the things that I keep at the back of my mind, I always tell people, I'll never send my children to a school that has no playing field. Because as children, if I can take you back in the day when we were growing up, we had all these open spaces where we would run to. Would have a, every school would have a school field, you know? And PE was compulsory, you know? Children had a chance to play. But now with the digital world, um, some of us are using our phones to babysit our children or to keep them company or because they are, they are living on an apartment building, they really have no space. So we, we need children being active is enough to show you that actually as human beings, we are supposed to be an active lot. Because, for example, anyone with a toddler can sit and ask how many kilometers their toddler has run around in one day as they run back and forth in the house. So that that is enough to tell you that actually they can keep exercising and they can keep uh, going around to do whatever sport they feel like doing from the onset, as long as they can move on their feet. The only thing is to make sure that the play area is secure for them, safe, um, and as a parent, your job is to have a first aid box. Let them run as much as they can. Let them play the football. Let them play the cricket. Let them play. Let them swim. Let them have as much activity as they can have. Even with time, they'll pick out their interests, what interests them and what is because we really part part of the reason um I was talking to one of the pediatricians, uh, Dr. Cassidy, and I was asking him, what is it with these children throwing tongues? But keeping them up. So the inside and everything you're telling them, don't touch there, don't go here, don't switch on that, don't do that. So you are stressing them, but they have all this energy packed up in inside of them and it has nowhere to go. So it's like you look at the children in the village. How many of those village children throw tantrums? They have uh, somewhere else to burn that energy. They run all over the place. So when they, they can run as much as they can. If, if they are interested, if they're interested in running completely, they can continue running. If they decide to pick a sport, maybe to ride bikes, maybe to play soccer, let them have it to their fullest. And as they grow, they can then you can pretty much put them into um, the structured sports. Because if you can see now, football academies are starting at what, six? Six years, um, eight years, you know, if a child is interested and they start grooming them to get better in the different um spots that they have chosen so we should let them the moment that the human being gets on their feet and they start running let them allow them to to use to burn the calories as they want and then you can streamline as they are growing up all you have to do is just make sure that the play area is there are safe spaces for them to play in Awesome. Um, and I just want to let uh, our listeners know that if you want to contribute to the conversation, uh, simply request uh, to speak and we will give you uh, a bit of time to uh, share your input uh, on this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, but really what we are seeing uh, and what we are hearing is that running is intertwined with uh, lots of uh, sectors, lots of... Um, cross-cutting issues from uh, children and uh, their ability to exercise, their ability to live healthy lives, to our own health as uh, adults, tying into improving mental health, building resilience, etc. But we're also hearing uh, issues around our natural build environment. Is it supporting um, opportunities for green spaces, opportunities for people to be able to exercise uh, without endangering uh, their health, uh, which really encompasses lots of sectors from uh, the transport sector, the infrastructure sector, etc. But most importantly, uh, again, we talked about the pollution and 
the absence of uh, running stretches. Benjamin talked about uh, the stretch al along um, uh, Mpanga Forest, which is uh, just one of the examples he could give uh, that would be a good area to run at. Um, this space is organized, especially for our uh, just joining listeners, uh, by Tree Adoption Uganda, and Tree Adoption Uganda is hosting the run for climate, which is meant uh, to restore 200 acres of land, uh, and that is about 100,000 trees. Uh, grown this year and uh, this is uh, needed because the country's forest cover is on a news dive every year we, lo we lose over a hundred thousand hectares of forested land so less and less green spaces and just to put that in context it's like 300,000 football pitches of trees lost every year. And I just want to now come again to our speakers uh, and uh, just uh, one last uh, question for you and also one last remark in relation to the run. What is your message uh, to listeners? What is your message uh, to other runners and various running uh, groups? I've had the opportunity to run with uh, some of them, like I mentioned yesterday, I ran with the Hashas, but Definitely, there are several other running groups. What would be your message uh, to them in uh, line with the upcoming run for climate? Benjamin, and then Janet. Um, <laughs> so first of all, the 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 run the run, the climate run is five kilometers. Uh, that's the longest, Charles. Right? Uh, we will have. Five kilometers and ten kilometers. But we will also have one kilometer for really, really uh, young children, and they will just run around uh, within Makere. Uh, they will do a fun run. So we will have three: uh, one kilometer, five kilometers, and ten kilometers. Uh -huh. So uh, first of all, I feel like those distances are really for everyone, including those who are just starting out. Um, those who have always wondered, you know, can I actually run? Go out and try the five kilometers or even the 10 kilometers. Uh, it shouldn't be hard. I think within possibly an hour and a half or maybe two hours at most, uh, everyone should be done, including the people who opt to do that 10 kilometers. So, um, the, the, Makerere itself, where the bulk of the running will be, is a somewhat of a hilly place. So it's not very easy. But one of the things I have learned is choose how you want to run the race, right? So if you decide you're not going to run up a hill for, for every hill, just you're not competing with anyone, um, we are all running for climate, so there's no money and the medals to be won. Uh, you are your only competition, so don't um, feel like you're under pressure to finish or, you know, do whatever. And the beauty with the university itself is that it has, it's one of the few places in Kampala, actually, that I have always felt is good for people who want to do runs and do walks. Because... Unlike many other places, Makere has well-paved roads. Two, almost, okay, maybe not almost, many of them are well lit. Three, you can just keep going around um, in, through all of those routes around the university and could make even up to 20 kilometers just running around the university. I think I saw the other day that, that it's on like 300 acres or something like that. So it's a, it's a like utterly huge place. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to the run and hope to see everyone there. Um, so yeah, so please come. These kinds of runs are essential because they, because of their, um, long-term value in terms of raising awareness around things like climate change, which all of us somehow interact with every day, but never really, um, 
talk about because it's sort of not um, in your face all 